Okay. Thank you all so much for joining us today for our presentation on Pleasanton's water conservation. We are interns for the Go Green Initiative and have been working all summer on studying Pleasanton's water systems and the importance of conservation. My name is Kate Inman and I'm a rising second year at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, studying political science and economics. Hi, my name is Aditi Karthik and I'm a rising sophomore at Amador Valley High School. Hi, my name is Sujana Shreeder and I'm a rising senior at Amador Valley High School. Hi everyone, my name is Anthony Min and I'm a rising junior at Foothill High School. Hi, my name is Afreen Shamim and I'm a rising senior at Foothill High School. Hi everyone, my name is Allison Lee and I'm a recent graduate from Foothill High School and incoming freshman at UCLA studying political science. Hi everyone, my name is Andy. I am majoring in managerial economics at UC Davis in the fall. To begin, we hope you take some time to visit the water footprint calculator quiz to gain a better understanding of your water consumption. Your water footprint is a measure of the amount of water you consume indoors, outdoors, and indirectly through things like diet and shopping. The link to the quiz is below in the description box, or you can type this link into a new tab on your window. Make sure to pause this video and return once you've finished. At the end of the quiz, the calculator displays your water footprint in gallons per day. You can also click on the button on the right for some tips on how to reduce your water footprint. We would love to hear from you about your results and see how they compare to those of the average American feel free to leave a comment below sharing your thoughts and observations. So far, we've briefly explored how much water we're using in our daily lives. That being said, some questions may still stand. Is my individual water consumption that impactful? The truth is yes. Everyone here plays a powerful role. Imagine if all Pleasanton residents aim to reduce their water footprint to 1,500 gallons or less. Going by the US daily average, that would mean we would save at least 24.7 million gallons per day. That adds up fast. The sooner we take on the individual responsibility, the sooner Pleasanton can reduce its water usage as a whole. But why save? Just six years ago, during the most intense days of the California drought, the amount of water Zone 7 received from the State Water Project, which is California's main water storage and delivery system, plummeted down to 5% of its typical allocation. This is significant because we get about 80% of our water from Zone 7, and a majority of that supply is from the State Water Project, whose main source is a snowpack on the Sierra. Looking at the components together, we can see how droughts severely limit the potential of the State Water Project and ultimately affect Zone 7's water allocation. Recently, Zone 7's State Water Project allocation for May increased to 20%, but even now, during a seemingly drought-free period, this amount is substantially less co compared to the amount that we were allotted in the past. Let's talk about our water's journey from the, Sierra, from the Sierra Nevadas to our taps. It's critical that we all know a little bit about the State Water Project, a statewide initiative that distributes water from the Sierra Nevada through the Californias. A melted snowpack from the Sierras takes an extensive journey from these mountains into the Feather River watershed and the Oroville Dam, down the Sacramento River, and through the Delta, where it follows the South Bay Aqueduct right to our front door. In short, dozens of complex systems are constantly hard at work to carry our water into the hands of our region's main supplier, the Zone 7 Water Agency. Finally, after our city purchase, purchases water from Zone 7, Pleasantonian retailers supply this water to all of us. Today, two-thirds of California depends on the state water project, including Pleasanton. Changes in climate impact the amount of surface water we get from the snowpack in the Sierra Mountains, which, as I mentioned before, is a major source of the water that Zone 7 obtains from the State Water Project. On this graph of the snowpack in California over the last 16 years, we can see two major trends. 
The first is major fluctuation in the amount of snowpack from year to year. The second is a general decrease in the amount of snow we're getting as we're having more and more years below the average. We need to be prepared for these fluctuations and reductions in snowpack. But how? By utilizing water conservation strategies, we can remedy the lack of supply during seasons with less snowpack on the Sierra Mountains. We can't predict the future, so we need to, know we need to be able to know that we can depend on our ability to adapt to a highly variable climate and changes in the future. Now, let's talk about the importance of conservation in relation to our community and the environment. When you think of Pleasanton, what comes to mind? Maybe you think of the great parks and schools, the beautiful hiking spots, the shops downtown, or the Meadowlark Dairy. Maybe you visited the Museum on Main or have gone paddleboarding at Shadow Cliffs. But believe it or not, none of the city's institutions would be able to exist without water. With less snowpack on the Sierras and thus a lesser water supply in Pleasanton, the very core of our community depends on its citizens taking action. Although Pleasanton does have enough rainfall for some years, it remains primarily a drought climate. To find out what our future might look like, we can turn to the experts. We met with Olivia Sanwong, the president of the board of directors for Zone 7, and she put it bluntly. Looking at the next 50 years, if we're lucky, we'll have half of those years without drought. Clearly, when it comes to droughts in California, it's not a matter of if, but when. In other words, we might not be suffering from a drought at this very moment, but that doesn't mean that we're not approaching one. And as you can see from the graph, the darkest areas indicate exceptionally dry periods of time. And there's a clear trend of these periods growing longer and more severe. As we saw from 2014 to 2017, droughts can significantly impact our town. Shadow Cliffs and Del Val were at the lowest water levels we've ever seen. Every other house had brown lawns. Through that difficult time, however, it was incredible to see our community come together to reduce its water usage. However, our efforts to conserve water shouldn't end when the drought does. Even if we never again suffer another drought, our water supply is still not infinite. So we spoke with another expert, Eric Cartwright, a retired water resources planning manager. According to Eric, we can minimize the impact of a drought by conserving water today. Water can be stored safely underground for up to 10 to 15 years, which is essential during years of droughts and little rainfall. Do it not just for yourself, but for your kids, grandkids, nieces, and nephews. For Pleasanton's future, saving water is an absolute must. Another reason for concern is how our water usage affects the environment around us. As dedicated citizens and inhabitants of this planet, it is our responsibility to protect the ecosystems that make our community thrive. One of the best things about living in Pleasanton is that we have access to beautiful vista points. The Sacramento River, Lake Del Val, and the San Francisco Bay are just all a short drive away. However, it seems we often forget that each of these ecosystems are dependent on our water usage. The Delta, one of the most important wildlife estuaries in our region, is supplied by the Sacramento River. And our local arroyos are supplied by Del Val when they run low. If we overpump the Sacramento River and Del Val for our own use, we could potentially harm wildlife downstream, including endangered species such as the Delta smelt fish, as seen in the top left corner. When you take a shower, wash your hands, or run the dishwasher, it's important to consider where that wastewater goes. Our treated wastewater ultimately ends up in the bay, and although it goes through a highly regulated process, a study by the San Francisco Estuary Institute show that on average, Bay Area wastewater treatment plants release an estimated 17 billion particles of microplastics per year to the San Francisco Bay, as their screens are not small enough to catch them. Microplastics absorb pollution and threaten wildlife that ingest them. 
These microplastics come from a variety of sources, including single-use plastics and textiles. If we install up-to-date washing machines and run fewer loads of laundry, we can greatly reduce the amount of plastic fibers that enter our wastewater. Water conservation and water quality are inextricably linked. Not only will conserving water help our community on a local level, but will also reduce our impact on climate change. Commission, as much as 19% of California's electricity consumption is for transporting and treating water. This percentage is much higher than many other states, as California has vast land to cover to transport water. So conserving water will reduce carbon dioxide emissions that are associated with energy production. As you can see, conserving water can help by preparing us for future droughts, preserving our community, protecting our environment, and reducing our carbon footprint. Now that we have considered the importance of conserving water, let's talk about the tools we can use to look at a household's water usage and take action. In Pleasanton, single-family homes are responsible for 56% of the city's water usage. Compare that to commercial businesses, which only account for around 12% of the city's water use. The other 32% of water usage is from multifamily homes, irrigation for places like parks and golf courses, and industrial uses. Luckily, the City of Pleasanton has a variety of resources we can choose from to help facilitate our water conservation on a day-to-day -day basis. All of these resources we'll discuss will be linked in the description box of this video. The water footprint quiz we mentioned earlier in this video is an important resource for us to recognize how much water we use, where the majority of it comes from, and explore several options for conservation. As you might have seen in your results, this quiz can help us be more mindful of our water consumption, whether it be indoors in the shower, outdoors when watering our gardens, or even beyond the home, through driving, shopping, eating, and using electricity. Once we're aware of what takes the most water in our homes, it becomes simpler to implement strategies and simple actions to reduce our water use in that respective avenue. The Mobile Citizen app is one medium through which we can conserve water as well. The app allows residents to report any place they see has a wastage of water. For example, a resident can spot a leaking pipe on Main Street and report it through this app. A city official will prioritize your report to ensure that the water issue is resolved quickly. The app can also be used to report other issues, such as viewing potholes or illegal dumping. Pleasanton residents can also refer to the annual Pleasanton Water Quality Report on the city website to learn about the safety of our local community's water. This report not only includes the results of tests, but also provides information about where our water comes from and definitions to commonly used water terminology. Reading this annual report is a great way to stay informed about the status of Pleasanton's water quality. Additionally, a useful resource that can assist us in regulating our water use is the smart water meter. Knowing how to read and understand a water meter will help you recognize water usage in your home. The smart water portal simplifies the complexity of a water meter. By creating an account, you can easily identify leaks, sign up for notifications for these suspected leaks, report water waste and water theft, and also look at how much water your house is using on an hourly basis. You can easily pay your water bills online through this portal as well. Lastly, there is a resource available for Pleasanton residents called the Controller Assistance Program, which allows you to call a technician for a no charge consultation to provide advice about how to efficiently program your water irrigation controllers. These evaluations take place over phone or laptop and allow you to have a personalized walkthrough of your landscape with the technician. Information on how to sign up can be found on the City of Pleasanton website under the Rebates and Services tab. There are many great resources at your disposal to educate yourself on how your water usage works and how to reduce your water footprint. Looking at the amount of water we use in our everyday lives can be overwhelming. Where do you start? 
While everyone has different circumstances, there are always positive changes we can make when it comes to conserving water. Here are some short-term changes you can make to conserve. Conserving water at home is essential, not only because it cuts your water bill, but because it also helps to preserve a vital resource. Using the smart water portal, Pleasanton residents will be able to save 14% of their water bill by finding and fixing leaks. One common source of leaks is the flapper valve on your toilet. With the tools the city provides for our assistance, detecting and fixing costly leaks are quick and easy ways to begin conserving water. In fact, free toilet dye strips Water efficient shower heads and bathroom aerators are available for order and pickup to ensure your entire bathroom is efficient and leak free. Another easy way to reduce your water footprint is to notice what you consume. Our diet makes up two thirds of our water footprint. So making water conscious food choices has a huge impact. Going vegetarian or vegan is a great way to cut back on the amount of water required to produce your food. However, subtle changes to your diet are still very beneficial. When you simply reduce your red meat consumption to two to three times per week, you will reduce your water footprint by 35%. Furthermore, swapping out meat with fish altogether reduces your footprint by a whopping 55%. We can also conserve water by keeping track of our shopping habits. This means cutting back on impulse buys and making sure we consider the necessity of an item before purchasing it. If you remember from the water footprint quiz, the US average for daily water use is 1,802 gallons. It takes almost exactly the same amount of water to produce a single pair of jeans. Buying less, repurposing and reusing existing supplies is usually the most sustainable path all around. Recycling as much as possible and donating goods, which we no longer need, are also other excellent ways to conserve water by regulating our shopping habits. A great way to stay updated on Pleasanton's water issues is attending the City Council's public hearings for water plans. You can also attend Zone 7 board meetings, which are open to the public, and sign up for their e-newsletter to get water updates delivered right to your inbox. It is also important to keep in mind that water conservation isn't limited to adults and businesses, but should be followed by all age groups in our community. Zone 7 Schools program offers several water science initiatives designed to help local teachers meet the California science standards and bring environmental science to life. Zone 7 also recommended looking into the Water Education Foundation, which is dedicated to resolving water resource problems through educational programs for adults. One of the most powerful tools Pleasanton citizens have is civic participation which can be achieved through voting. While like local and state elections are sometimes overlooked, they truly have a large impact on our day-to-day -day lives. Since voting for someone on the Zone 7 Board or the Pleasanton City Council can have a significant effect on the management of your water, we want to encourage Pleasanton residents to educate themselves before casting their ballots in local elections. We've discussed the many simple alterations we can make in our everyday lives to conserve water. Now, let's talk about some larger scale, long-term changes residents can make. Our first suggestion is to install low flow faucets and shower heads, which can save up to 2.5 gallons for every five minutes of use compared to those regular standard appliances. You can also replace utilities like old washing machines and dishwashers with Energy Star certified appliances. Other common utilities you can replace are old washing machines and dishwashers. Another appliance that you may not realize uses large amounts of water is the toilet. High flow toilets can use up to five times as many gallons compared to their low flow counterparts. By replacing these household items, a family of four can save a around 16,000 gallons of water per year. In terms of outdoor changes, switching from a traditional lawn to a more drought tolerant landscape can drastically reduce a household's water use. You can achieve a drought tolerant land garden by taking out your lawn and planting drought, tolerant, drought resistant plants such as succulents or daffodils, and, or by adding less water intensive grass such as native grass lawns. It's also useful to follow the yearly calendar provided on Pleasanton's website for tips on when and how often to water your gardens. Incorporating drip irrigation and using recycled water are other impactful ways to conserve water and save on expensive irrigation costs. 
Saving water definitely reduces the number in your water bill, but the economic benefits don't stop there. Zone 7 offers rebates for customers who choose to buy certain water efficient appliances, such as high efficiency washing machines and toilets. Make sure to look for the Energy Star label on washing machines to qualify for the Zone 7 rebates. Residents thousand dollars on high efficiency irrigation systems. Businesses can also save up to $5,500 on high efficiency irrigation systems. It is also important to note that residents and businesses may be charged additional fees for excessive water use, especially during high demand hours. To ensure that you are saving as much money as possible, make sure to use less water during these hours. By implementing these changes, businesses and homeowners will have the ability to make a huge impact. The city of Pleasanton is taking strides to ensure the longevity of our water supply as well. One ongoing project that helps accomplish this goal is the Purple Pipes Project, which aims to save 450 million gallons of potable water annually in Pleasanton by using recycled water from the Dublin San Ramon Services District to irrigate recreational areas like the Ken Mercer Sports Park. This project is only one of many necessary steps that we should take as a community to promote a water conscientious future. It's proof that the city is taking steps to combat our decreasing water supply, so citizens should too. Overall, the diversity and accessibility of options for Pleasanton community members to conserve water is extensive. By making changes that are tailored to your situation, you can make water conservation more of a way of life. We need Pleasantonians to implement conservation strategies into their lives so that our businesses, residents, and town can thrive for generations to come. Thank you so much for listening to our presentation. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below.